Hi everyone, my name is George, and this is a household budget and accounting workbook that I created a few years ago and have been updating periodically. I recently made a template of it, and I think it could be helpful for others as well, so I decided to make this video. This is not a video explaining how to create your own household budget. It's a video explaining how to use the one I've created, which I do think can be a very helpful start to a lot of people. It's also I also created it so that it would be easy to use. It might look overwhelming here. I hope it doesn't, but if it does, I created it with people who are very new to Excel in mind. So there's very little that you actually have to do to get all this information. And a third brief note is just that this isn't for everybody. I think for most people, this could cover what they're looking for in a household budget. If someone, for example, though, is just looking to track assets increasing or decreasing in value or manage investments, this is probably not what you're looking for. In any case, let's go ahead and get started. This is the summary tab of the workbook, so this is where I like to open up to. In general, in fact every case, in this workbook whenever a cell is filled with green it requires manual input of some sort, otherwise everything will update automatically. For example here we see that a date needs to be put in and you can put your name up top here. The date is very important because it is used to calculate how many days have passed since you started using this workbook and how many months have passed since then as well, which will be used to calculate averages to see how much on average you might have spent uh, per month, whether it's eight months or 10 months down the road. Over here we have some information on income and spending. All this information will update automatically if we just keep track of the four green sheets down here. We have some earning categories right here as well. This updates from the income sheet and if you're new to Excel, one of the really cool things about it is that you can sort and filter tables however you would like. So if we want to sort our income this current month, we can just click on the down arrow and then hit descending. We could sort it so it's ascending. I like to just keep this total column sorted so that it's descending. And over here we have the same thing with expenses. These are all the expenses that after four years, everything I've spent money on has fallen under you might want to add or subtract some that's perfectly fine I'll show you how to do that when we get to the list tab down here in any case this is sortable you could sort it by your total you could sort it by uh, monthly total you could sort it by category if you'd like you can make it alphabetical whatever suits your fancy and last note before leaving this sheet is just that throughout this workbook you'll see green boxes with information on it those are just notes directions on how to use this workbook they're pretty simple I don't think there's there's a whole lot going on here However, I can't cover it all in the video, so I, I made some boxes that might be helpful. I will leave, I will post this template so you could download it and follow along if you would like. And I will also post a blank version of it so you could download that and start working on your own. So we'll go over to the income tab here. Now in the income tab, the first thing we have up top is the cumulative total of all income that's recorded in this workbook. Now all we have to do is enter three pieces of information for the spreadsheet to function. We just need to put in a date, an amount, and the category that the income falls under. There's a list here of six items. You can change this. I'll show you how to do that. I like to fill in all the columns though because I really love data and information. So for me, that's what I enjoy doing. I think it's helpful when I look back to see where I've earned money or on the next sheet where I've spent money to have all those columns filled in. This of course is sortable. You can sort it by amount here to see the where the most money came in. You could do the opposite to see what the smallest amount of income was. I like to sort the date here and just have it so that the least recent date is at the top and that the most recent date is at the bottom. And then I just keep adding things as income comes in. The next sheet, the expenses sheet, is very similar except it's just expenses. Anytime money goes out, I record it here. As you can see, these are just sample expenses that, that I've documented here. You only need to enter a date, a price, and an expense. And there's also a drop down list here. These are all those expenses, and I'll show you how this list is created if you want to modify it in a little while. The white columns, the columns that are not filled, I like to put information in. I just think it's helpful overall. One of the cool things about this column, this is the necessity or luxury column, is if money's tight, I could always just sort it, or filter it rather, 
by what items are luxuries. And I could say, okay, clearly I have overspent on some of these things. And I could see what they are. For example, a cool pair of pants, $51. My first car cost less than that. I'm exaggerating, but that's a lot for a pair of pants, perhaps. And then let's say fancy computer accessories. That might be some area I could also cut down. So I think, I think it provides a lot of information that could be helpful depending on what your needs are. You can also, of course, sort this by price to see what your biggest expense is. You can sort it by the particular expense. So if you only want to see, for example, how much money you spent on grocery shopping, you could actually just filter it so it only shows your groceries. Now we'll clear that filter. The highlighting happens automatically, by the way. That's done using conditional formatting, which you don't have to worry about. On the budget sheet, this might look pretty busy and overwhelming. I promise it's not. The only things that actually need to have data put into them are the projected average columns, these two right here, and then these four income uh, cells right here, but only two if, if you live by yourself. Here, projected average, this just this number is up to you. You could just put in whatever number you think on average for a given month you would spend in this category. This column next to it will tell you how much you actually spend, and then this one next to that will tell you this current month how much you spent. The formatting also happens automatically, as you'll see here. Some cells are uh, light up in red and they have red font. That happens whenever this number is greater than you projected, it'll light up red to help you identify where you might be spending more than you had anticipated. Over here, for example, we have recreation for $14. It has not been highlighted in red because it is not greater than the projected average. Over here, this cell will go ahead and add all of your projected expenses for you and tell you how much the, the sheet uh, calculates you're projecting to spend. This just multiplies it by 12 to say, OK, then in a year you're going to spend this much, which means you need to make at least this much gross. Uh, and this will tell you what your actual gross income is, which gets it from right here. So if you live alone, you can just delete income to clear it out. And then this number here tells you the difference between how much you currently make and how much if you actually spent what you were projecting to spend, where you'd be at after a year. This one says we would overspend by 15,000. But let's let me undo erasing the income with these two incomes, for example, and these exact expenses we would pull in $12,000 more than we would spend for a given year. Obviously, you want these numbers to be positive. Anything greater than zero means you're currently making more money than you're spending. Anything red or less than zero means you are currently spending or projecting to spend more than you are currently making. And there's just some general information here. If you want to add a third, third income, there's a little note here on how to do that. And I think that's just about it on this sheet. The last sheet that requires any user input is just the bank balances spreadsheet. I like this one because a lot of money moves in and goes out throughout the month. It can get kind of hectic. This just tells me in a one-stop shop, I record what my ending bank balances were at the end of the month when the statement arrives, and then it creates a, a big picture of, of where the money's at sort of at the end of the month, how much is there that's actually uh, in existence. But at, at this point, we've only actually used four sheets. We have income, which only requires three columns worth of information. Expenses, same thing. Budget, very minimal. And then bank balances. So if you've entered information in those four sheets, everything else that you're going to see will update automatically for you. So it really requires very little effort. And if you want to change any of these, by the way, there's a little note down here on how to do that. So now we'll start with some of the graphical displays of this information. First, we have a pie chart of the income distribution. This is just pulling information directly from the summary tab. You don't have to touch it at all. We have the same thing here for expenses, telling us where exactly our expenses are and where the money is going. You might notice there's a big cluster here of all the values that have exactly zero dollars. That's because this graph is pulling it from the summary tab, and there's all these expenses down here that have zeros. That's just because I didn't go ahead and put in data for all those. But if you wanted to, you could always just deselect zero dollars, which tells the table, don't show me to zero dollars, and it will actually update automatically. It's like a magic trick. Of course, you, you want to go back, though, because when we do that, some cells are hidden in the worksheet. So when you're done viewing it, just go back and uh, click on zero again. So we have our pie chart of expenses. The bar chart is exactly the same thing, but 
I like the bar chart a little better. I like the graphical display. And if you're looking to cut some expenses or reallocate some money, I think it's it's a great tool for comparison of where money is going. For example, groceries look to be two, three, four times as large as all of these categories. So if, if one were looking to, for a way to cut expenses, that might be something uh, worth looking into, although groceries are pretty important for most people. So I would maybe suggest another category. But this is just made up data, so none of this really means a whole lot right now. Next, next sheet is uh, an income and expenses tracker for the year 2015. The blue line is income, red line is expenses. Ideally, the blue line will always be higher than the red line. This will update for you in real time. Over the course of the month, it will just tell you how you're doing. Are you making more than you're spending? And on the next sheet, we have our bank balances. This light blue line here will add up the totals from all the bank balances that we just filled in uh, a few sheets ago. And this will track throughout the course of the year. You don't have to tell the workbook when it's April, May, June, July, or August. It will know by itself which month it is. So once you, if you keep track of these four green sheets down here, everything will update for you. This last tab, well, second last tab, is monthly income expenses. It's the same thing as that line chart, except for people who would rather see the numbers and not see the displays, you can just look at this sheet. Same information, just in a table form. And the last sheet, perhaps the most important sheet, this is what goes on under the hood in some ways. It's not really everything that goes on under the hood. But all those lists that we were using throughout the document have to come from somewhere. They have to be stored in the workbook. So here are where all the lists are stored. Expenses, for example, if we go to the Expenses tab, this drop-down menu, that's what we were looking at just now on the list sheet. So we're going to go back there. Oopsie. I moved it over one accidentally. So we're on the list sheet. And let's say, for example, you would like to get rid of some of these, add some of these. I have directions here how to do that. So if you have an awesome shoe collection, for example, and you want that to be its own category, that's wonderful. You could do that. And also, if you think that I have some things that just aren't applicable to you, let's say pet food and care, you don't have pets, you're not really looking to get a pet, it would break my wife's heart to know that. But that's okay if that's your decision. You could just delete that from, from this list, and then that would clean up the, the range of expenses for you a bit. Just follow these directions here. An important note, please read this. If you want to change my name for something, let's say you don't like that I have cell phone, you think there's a better name for that, that's fine. But keep in mind, the way that the worksheet functions, when it pulls together all those averages and all those numbers, it looks for the word cell phone in the expenses worksheet. So if you want to change the name, just be aware that when in the past you've used cell phone, that would have to be changed too. So follow that note here. And if you would like to change any of these four columns right here, this is how you do it in this box. That is just about it. I hope that was helpful. There are boxes here if you have any further questions. It brings us back to the summary tab here. Please feel free to comment below. I hope that's helpful. It's been really helpful for me over the past four years, and my wife and I have really enjoyed using it this past year. I'm happy to help with any questions. Thank you very much for watching.